Hello Booktube, this is Weekly Read, and I've had a very good reading week, despite two bales. And in large part, that's because the first book I read this week was a bell redemption that actually was achieved. And that book was Unsettled Land um, from Revolution to Republic, The Struggle for Texas by Sam W. Haynes. This is the history of Texas uh, from roughly 1820 to 1847, and it covers the beginnings of American migration to Texas, uh, the years of increasing migration to Texas, um, the years, well, the year of the Texas Revolution, the years of the Texas Republic, and the annexation of Texas up through the Mexican-American War. Uh, but the thing is, is that Haynes takes a more myth-busting approach to this history. Uh, this, these early years of Texas have been mythologized for well over a century, and Haynes takes the time to really examine these myths and to show that things weren't quite this way. I mean, he starts with um, the Texas Cherokee in the early 19th century as um, white American migration to Texas was beginning. Uh, bands of Cherokee moved into Texas and became known as the Texas Cherokee. And they lived in Texas for uh, nearly 20 years uh, before they were ultimately expelled um, into Oklahoma. Um, Haynes also looks at the, uh, the Comanche, and he also does a deep dive into the, into Mexican politics during the period, which is incredibly fascinating. And he does a really interesting job on Santa Ana. So I quite like the book, um, despite having initially bailed on it. And I think the reason why I bailed on the book is largely it has a very unfortunate introduction. The introduction is rather, uh, it's kind of like a, George R. R. Martin prologue. It's like a prologue that really goes nowhere. And in a way, um, the history of Dolores, this small little village uh, on the Rio Grande, I mean, just, it really never, it doesn't go nowhere. It's like, basically, what the introduction after that section could have just worked as well for an introduction, so. But I think that was kind of my, kind of set me off um, the first time I read it. But coming back to it, I rather enjoyed it. So definitely highly recommend it. And hopefully I will have a review of Unsettled Land up in the not too distant future on Open Letters Review. After I finished Unsettled Land, I read uh, a volume of manga again. I mean, the manga reading have been the highlights of my weeks these past few months. So the first uh, volume of manga I read this uh, week was Kaiju Number no. 8 by Naoya Matsumoto. This is a shonen manga series about a man in his 30s named Kafka. Uh, when he was younger, he and his best friend dreamed of, join, of joining a special force or a special service within the Japanese Self-Defense Force, uh, who specialized in fighting kaiju in this setting. Uh, kaiju giant monsters routinely attack Japan. And for kaiju, basically think Godzilla, or monsters like that. Um, the friend made it and she's become a legendary captain. Kafka, on the other hand, failed and has, in order to still kind of support her, has joined a company that specializes in cleaning up the after effects of uh, kaiju defeats, of like what's left over. And so he goes about this life until He's injured during a cleanup operation, and while he's in the hospital, he is accosted by a mosquito or dragonfly-looking kaiju. And 
this kaiju bonds with Kafka and he becomes effectively a half-human kaiju hybrid. And he then proceeds to sort of fight other kaiju. And he takes this opportunity, along with some encouragement by his friend um, Ichikawa, to try out again for the, the special defense force um, unit. And so in the first volume, it ends with him taking the uh, tests in this volume. He's been accepted as a cadet that while he's and as a kaiju, he can whoop some other kaiju booty. As a human, he's not quite right, but he's rather hilarious. And so the lieutenant of the unit um, or the vice captain of the unit uh, keeps him on as a cadet. And so in this uh, volume, there's a kaiju attack that serves as the first operation for this new cadre of uh, the unit, and he uh, performs well as sort of um, figuring out what the um, um, kaiju's biology is, which was really cool, and then, <coughs> excuse me, he uh, then basically goes and rescues a friend of his who's be being attacked by the a major antagonist. I'm looking for some images. So I quite enjoyed the um, volume quite a bit. I mean, the humor, the artwork. I'm looking for a really good example of the artwork to show you. Um, Oh, yeah. Like that there. Um, so, yeah, I really enjoyed it. My only issues with the series is that um, there's a lot, um, quite a number of these um, trainees, the um, people who've um, passed the sort of the entry trials for this elite force. They have a sort of a improving rivalry with each other. It's sort of a, I mean, it's a stock element in shonen manga where um, the protagonists will have rivalries with each other and these rivalries force them to improve um, quite markedly in their skills as the series goes on. But in this setting, it's given it as a modern military force that I, I kind of wonder if this sort of rivalry isn't quite misplaced because obviously the goal would be to form units that can work as a team to accomplish their missions. Um, but at the same time, this rivalry does produce some really wonderful friendship moments, uh, particularly uh, between uh, two of the characters. So I kind of enjoyed that. And Kafka at times, uh, particularly when he's a plain old human, can be a, his, the humor around him can be a bit much, even though I do like the fact that he is an older man as the main protagonist, which usually uh, shonen protagonists are in their mid to late teens, sometimes early 20s, but it's mostly in the late teen range. But anyway, so that was um, Kaiju number eight, which I quite enjoyed. And I'm looking forward to um, volume three, which I have. Anyway, okay. So moving on to the two bells, which occurred on Monday and Tuesday, and they were both uh, for my, the birth year book tag TBR. So a few months ago, Criminali uh, created the birth year book tag. And the first question was for the responders to talk about um, whether or not they've read 
books published in their birth year, and if they had, what were their favorites? Um, I've read a few, very few, books published in 1983, and I don't quite remember what, if any, were my favorites. But I was looking around at um, the list of what was published, and quite a few books jumped out at me. Although, and so I decided to pick them up and read them uh, as a part of the of a birth year book tag TBR. Unfortunately, again, I did bail on both of them. And the two are The Moons of Jupiter by Alice Munro. Yeah. And Cathedral by Raymond Carver. Uh, the best thing I can say about both of them is that Steve Donahue is right. Um, Alice Munro's uh, prose is pretty, but it's dull. It's basically, yeah, I mean, reading train timetables is an apt description of it and quite a bit of what goes on. Um, I made it quite a ways through the first story, uh, Connections, which is part of a duology of stories titled um, The Chadleys and Flemings, which is about the narrator's family. Uh, the first story is about her mother's family, and it tells the story of two visits, the first of um, the narrator's mother's cousins. The first one was when the narrator was a child, and it was a described as a wonderful, magical experience that shortly afterwards they the cousins started to die and the second visit is one of the last remaining cousins coming to visit a now adult narrator who is married to a man who is quite abusive uh, and the story while again it's prettily written just didn't go anywhere and that was a lot of the stories that I looked into, that I dipped into, um, I did bail on most of them and ultimately decided to just bail on the entire collection. <sighs> uh, Raymond uh, Cathedral is, in a way, I'm not entirely sure how prettily the prose is. It's fairly dude bro, I would say. Um, I read the first story, Feathers, and it's about uh, the narrator who works at a factory, who's friends with this one guy, and the friend invites the narrator and his the narrator's wife to dinner with the friend and the friend's wife uh, at their the friend's rural home. There's a peacock and a very ugly baby. And somehow or other, this dinner inspires the narrator and the narrator's wife to eventually have a baby. And that's it. <laughs> and it's, yeah. And the other stories were, that I dipped into were kind of similar. So again, it did nothing for me. But on Wednesday, I was saved by more manga. I uh, started out my Wednesday reading with uh, volume one of My Hero Academia by Kohei Horikoshi. Uh, this is a manga series inspired by American superheroes. In the setting, 80% um, of the human population have superpowers called quirks. And a few of these um, superpowered humans are superheroes. Most famously, All Might, this character right here. Um, our protagonist, Izuku um, Midoriya, uh, one, this young man here, wants to be a superhero, but he has no superpowers. He's quirkless. And for this, he is brutally uh, bullied by a character named Bakugo, who is incredibly powerful, 
um, and it's likely to be the first student from um, this middle school to be uh, admitted to UA, the uh, Japan's superhero academy, and become a superhero. Although, given Bakugo's personality, eh, he needs a lot of work because he seems to be more of a villain than a hero. But anyway, I'm pretty sure as the series progresses, he does get uh, some uh, character work done on him. But back to Izuku, um, he is he wants to be a superhero. He's obsessed with superheroes. And one day he is attacked by a gelatinous villain and rescued by All Might. And after he's rescued, um, Izuku talks to All Might for a little bit and learns some startling truths about All Might. Uh, and... As um, they're talking, Izuku, I mean, not Izuku, Bakugo is attacked by this gelatinous villain. Uh, the villain managed to escape. And Izuku comes upon the scene, and knowing that even though his tormentor is in danger, and that he has, and Izuku has no powers, he's quirkless. He can't really do anything to help. Even though any number of superheroes are in the vicinity and can't help because their quirks are no match, aren't a specific match for this villain, that there's like nothing anybody can do. And then Izuku just acts. And this is a wonderful, wonderful uh, set of images. I just, I love this scene. And um, these images. And I just, I love the art. And so, um, Izuku inspires All Might to come back and rescue Bakugo. And um, Izuku's act of sacrifice, his sort of rescuing um, Baku, Bakugo, even though he has no powers, that there is a good chance he could have been killed himself, inspires All Might to decide to make Izuku a sort of a successor and pa to pass on um, his power, his quirk, uh, which can be passed on to the quirkless. So over the next 10 months, um, Izuku begins to train and train hard until the day of the um, uh, exam for UA, the Superhero Academy, when um, Izuku gets his um, requisite um, superhero belt. And so Izuku uh, goes and he takes the exam and he's accepted and he becomes a trainee superhero alongside a number of other friends, including and enemies, including Bakugo. So, you know, I really enjoyed this. This um, volume was amazing. And I especially really like um, what um, Horikoshi does with um, Izuku's character. It's really, really fascinating. I'm looking forward to seeing how things go from here. And I do have volumes two and three on order. And another manga series that I just started and really, really enjoy is... Um, Jujutsu Kaisen. This is volume one by Gege Akutami. Um, I read this after I read um, My Hero Academia volume one. And this is a series about um, set in the modern day, um, set in Japan, about uh, Jujutsu sorcerers. They are people with magic who fight um, curses and ghosts and um, evil sorcerers, that sort of thing. And the main character is um, Itadori, who um, seems to be a normal young man. But as a high school student, he has joined an occult research club at his school. And Itadori found a cursed object that a, another uh, Jujutsu trainee sorcerer is looking for. 
and it ends up going missing. And uh, well, the two other members of the club are kind of opening it, and they're attacked. And um, let's see if I could find it. Um, Itadori helps um, the trainee sorcerer out. You know, wonderful sequence. And to more fully help out, um, Itadori eats <laughs> the cursed object and basically um, let me see if I can find it. Um, basically can incorporate this um, evil sorcerer's power within him without being killed or going insane. Um, and so he's basically forced to decide whether he's going to be killed, executed um, immediately because obviously he's kind of consumed a cursed object and and while he's controlling it, people like him aren't usually allowed to live. Or since he seems to be capable of controlling it to basically keep going, that there are 19 more of these cursed objects. And so basically the idea is for him to eat the other cursed objects so that the whole of this evil sorcerer is within him and then they'll kill him so that the threat of this evil sorcerer is gone for good. So Itadori takes this last option and goes to uh, the same jujutsu school as um, the young man he met in the first chapter. And then he kind of becomes a trainee and he is sent on a few missions. Uh, like to just train and stuff. And then uh, the volume ends with them uh, going to a curse outbreak at a prison, which ends incredibly like just. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed this volume. It's I'm looking. I'm definitely looking forward to picking up more volumes of you, uh, Jujutsu Kaisen, as well as My Hero Academia. No, so that was great. I just I. I had a blast reading all three volumes of manga. <sighs> so that pretty much that was Wednesday. Um, Thursday I had to go watch the Four Children of the Apocalypse, so I decided to continue my readings of um, National Geographic. Didn't quite go all that well. Also, the kids were a bit of a pain in the rear end. Um, also, did that on. Monday to watch the four children of the apocalypse and then today I continued on the most recent issue of National Geographic that I had um, because I had a bit of a doctor's appointment um, and then also had some uh, house cleaning to do so didn't really read much today either um, anyway so that was my reading week um, next week I'm got a bit of a conundrum um, lately there's this, uh, spate of, uh, videos going around asking about, like, do you have too many books? Can you ever have too many books? And while, uh, in this kind of conversation was started by Michael K. Vaughn and then, uh, Shandi Stanfest did, um, a response in his sort of humorous way. And then Steve Donahue had a response, and these videos got me thinking that while I don't have too many books at the moment, although I am fast running out of space, that um, I do need to really start to look at my science fiction, because recently I moved a large chunk of my science fiction and fantasy off of the last of the science fiction and fantasy shelves, this shelf here, or bookcase here. 
which used to have um, a good chunk of the tail end of my science fiction and fantasy collection because I wanted to um, use that bookcase for manga, which is what it currently has. So that left all of the science fiction and fantasy that were on that shelf homeless. I've moved some of them to my headboard bookcase and a few others are on a wall shelf that's above um, the first part of the science fiction and fantasy collection. And I think if I have time this weekend and into next week, I might sort of do a bit of some rearranging to try to work on that, the science fiction fantasy section. Um, and then kind of start to decide who I want to keep and who I want to get rid of. But I also want to sort of start focusing a bit more heavily on science fiction and fantasy so I can sort of figure out how I want to go forward with science fiction and fantasy, particularly in a more constrained uh, space in my library, since it no longer has this bookcase. So to that end, I'm planning on reading this weekend On a Pale Horse by Pierce Anthony. Uh, this book was also published in 1983 and it's one of the uh, books I've been looking for, forward to reading. Ignore the two bales um, for the birth year book tag TBR. Uh, it's about a young man who uh, becomes a new incarnation of death. And I also want to read Sorcerer's Son by Phyllis Eisenstein. This is a fantasy about a young man who goes in search of his father. Um, I read the first chapter a few months ago for a tried chapter tag in which I was again thinking about how to determine what books in my collection I want to keep, particularly science fiction and fantasy, which is a bit of a problem. And I'll, I think I'll make a dedicated video at some point, and hopefully I can make the video and it won't displease me so much that I don't actually do it. We'll see, but I do want to have a go at this. But I'm also really wanting to have it out with a number of the books on my um, English Lit Major shelf, uh, for lack of a better term for it. That's where I keep, um, that bookcase is where I keep um, my classics and my canonical fiction, poetry, and trauma, um, and literary fiction, and general poetry. Um, And so I'm thinking of also having a go at And Their Children After Them by Nicola or Nicholas Matthew. Uh, this is a French novel that came out a few years ago and I wanted to read it. And I it's one of the first books I bought from Book People in 2020 and I've never gotten around to it and I really need to. So I'm also kind of thinking about reading this, but if I decide not to get to it this week, I'll definitely get to it next week when I will also maybe do another Bell of Redemption. So anyway, so that's my plan for the coming uh, reading week. As far as videos are concerned, um, Monday there likely won't be a video or there might be one, I don't know. Uh, it depends if I want to take some time to sort of work on my library or not. Um, Cause I also will be watching the Four Children of the Apocalypse that day, as well as Thursday. So no videos on Thursday. I'll try to do some tag videos on Tuesday and maybe Wednesday, or maybe do a discussion video. Um, Cause there are a few things I do want to discuss, but the discussions are kind of, and then on Friday, there will of course be weekly reads. So yeah, that's my uh, filming plan for next week. Um, anyway, that's about all I got for now. 
um, before I start to ramble, and I'm also getting very close to 30 minutes, so I'm going to go ahead and sign off for now. Thank you, BookTube. Have a great rest of your evening and weekend, and I will see you hopefully either on Monday or Tuesday. So until then, BookTube, stay safe.